All right, folks. Hello, welcome back and happy new year. It's been a busy couple months for Redwire, so I wanted to come on today, spend a few minutes talking about a couple new press releases, some insider transactions, the valuation, but we got to start with the share price. Since we last spoke, Redwire has run up to the tune of 50, 60%, or 100% if you're looking one month previous. Now, to the gentleman who told me that I was a fool for buying Redwire in the $5 range because it was going to the $1 range, one of us was wrong and the other person is me. Now, jokes aside though, hope you're doing well, even though you're wrong. Moving to our first piece of news, on December 18th, Redwire was awarded a contract to provide spacecraft docking systems for the exploration company's European Space Capsule. Redwire and the exploration company announced that they have entered an agreement for Redwire to provide two IDSS compliant docking systems for TEC's flagship spacecraft, NIX. Through this eight-figure deal, Redwire's state-of-the-art docking system, the International Berthing and Docking Mechanism, aka IBDM, will support future autonomous rendezvous and docking capabilities for NIX, contributing to Europe's goal of strengthening autonomous access to space. Developed in Belgium in collaboration with the international partners and the European Space Agency, IBDM is compliant with the IDSS and supports both berthing and autonomous docking operations as part of a modular, standardized interface architecture. The IBDM program is also supported by the Redwire office in Poland. Redwire's offices in Belgium and Poland are already working on an IBDM system for the Lunar Gateway's international habitat. The lessons learned from this effort will further bolster the capabilities of and confidence in the docking systems that will be provided for TEC through NIX. Now, it's unclear if this eight figures, if that means 10 million or 99 million. Though if we look at other docking adapters, it's probably safe to assume something in the $25 million per unit range or something like $50 million for the pair. And with NYX planning to launch this craft in 2028, this contract will add something like $15 to $20 million per year for Redwire. So it's not huge, but if we were to look at some of the recent press releases, we'll see this contract is not a one-off, right? We've got the docking system, we've got this DARPA mission, uh, we've got a new facility in Michigan, a partnership between Edge Autonomy and Eurolink Systems, another contract to deliver uncrewed aerial systems to Croatian border control, so on and so on. So there's no shortage of contracts, and each of these is going to contribute something to the top line. And despite this docking system agreement being you know, somewhat smaller in scope, these small contracts are continuing to add up for Redwire. Moving to our next piece of news, Redwire successfully completes payload integration for upcoming European technology demonstration mission. Now, this is the one that we spoke about in the last episode, the Zenzeo 3 satellite. Redwire announces a successfully completed payload integrations for the ESA's Zendeo 3 satellite mission. This marks a major milestone as the mission readies for launch, which has reiterated the Q4 2026. This spacecraft was built and integrated at Redwire's state-of-the-art facility in Croybeck, Belgium. As the prime contractor for the mission, Redwire integrated 10 technology demonstration payloads funded by the European Commission and developed by government and commercial partners in Spain, France, Germany, Italy, and Luxembourg. This mission is funded by the European Union and will support several innovative technology demonstrations as part of the in-orbit demonstration and in-orbit validation program, which aims to accelerate the deployment of new technologies and stimulate the European space ecosystem. The Zendeo 3 technology demonstration payloads support a range of mission applications, including space debris monitoring, deorbiting of low Earth orbit spacecraft, and spacecraft thermal control. So this isn't huge news. We already knew about this in day 3 mission. We already knew that it was launching in Q4. But there is a bit of housekeeping that I want to do because I think I may have misspoke in the last episode, and I'll explain why. On December 22nd, ISAR Aerospace uploaded a video, a one-minute clip, alongside the text that reads, Christmas lights aren't the only thing blazing this season. Spectrum engines are too. Less than nine months after our first test flight, we have cleared final tests for our second launch from Andoya Space. Both stages passed 30-second integrated static fire tests. Now, the part that I'm a little bit unclear about is I was under the impression that the second launch from ISAR Aerospace was going to be this Redwire spacecraft, but it seems like there may actually be a launch in between. So I was kind of trash talking, like, hey, maybe we shouldn't go with a launch provider that has zero successes, 
but it seems like we might have that extra padding, that extra margin of one launch in between, maybe two launches in between, but right now as it sits, it seems like Redwire might be their, at least their third launch rather than their second. To take it a step further, I actually did a bit of digging on ISAR Aerospace's website and I did find this, and I think this might provide a bit of clarity as to that mystery launch that happens before Redwire's. On September 24th, it was announced that satellite launch service company ISAR Aerospace and RSpace signed a launch service agreement as part of the European Space Agency Marketplace program. Under the agreement, ISAR Aerospace will launch two R-Space satellites aboard its Spectrum launch vehicle in 2026 from Andoya Spaceport. Further flights are planned for 2026 and 2027, underscoring both companies' commitment to long-term collaboration. Now, I'm a little bit unclear in the way this is communicated. Like, this probably is ISAR's second launch. And then I don't, like, there's, if they're launching two spacecraft, I'm not sure how there are further flights planned for 2026. If that means maybe that's just ISAR Aerospace or if that's, I, I don't know. I'm a little bit unclear. The way that it's communicated here, it makes me think that there are three launches at least. Either way, it gives ISAR at least a, an extra launch to kind of figure things out. And, you know, hopefully things go a little bit smoother than the first launch. All right. So before we go into valuation, there are a couple form fours that we're going to cover. Our first is from Chairman and CEO, Peter Canito. You'll see that he was awarded 255,000 shares as part of a performance-based restricted stock unit vesting, and that he had to part ways with 116,000 of these that were mandatorily withheld due to taxes in connection with said PSU. Um, similarly, same thing for the new CFO, Chris Edmonds. He was awarded 40.5 thousand shares, had to part ways with 16.3. You'll see that the management once awarded these shares are holding them. And this is the trajectory that I love to see, is when management are buying into the same companies that you're buying into, right? What this communicates to me is that management cares about the company enough to hold the shares and seize upside in well, the shares that they hold. Now, I don't want to criticize Rocket Lab here, but I will bring this up just to make a point. This is a very different um, trajectory compared to what we see with Redwire. Now, of course, very different scenarios where in the case of Redwire, once they're awarded, they're immediately paying off those taxes versus Rocket Lab, which is like they're awarded and then they pay those taxes off over time. So it's just a little bit of a different relationship, but some of these are also not just tax-based, right? Some of these are pre-planned selling, which shouldn't just be hand-waved away. Like this one, for example, here, this negative 32%, that was also pre-planned. Like it doesn't, I, I don't know. Of course, everybody sells stocks for different reasons. I, I, I understand all that. But all I'm just saying is like, you just see a relationship here and you see a relationship here and one is a little bit more preferable than the other. One other thing that I want to bring up with Redwire too is like, it's also easy to look at this and well, yeah, they're just being awarded, but they're not. So all of these green cells, these imply, uh, and not exclusively, right? Um, like some of these outright purchase, outright purchase. This one is performance-based stock units, the one that we just went over actually. But you'll see that it's just Redwire's management are buying these shares over time. And that's something that I also love to see. Like if I'm buying into your company, like simply put, why should I be buying into your company? Are you buying into your company? A couple months ago, Jared Isaacman bought, I think $16 million worth of ship for shares. Looking at that, you know, the share price came down a little bit after and I'm like, well, if he saw $16 million worth of value at, you know, I, I can't remember the share price, I'm going to buy in the same range because he has a lot better visibility into the ship for than I do. And if I already find value and he sees that much more value, that's, you know, that's an easy sell for me. Easy buy for me, I should say. One last thing, we'll kind of pivot away from the form fours, but we'll also kind of stay within the same, uh, the same general topic. So there are also some form 144s that were posted earlier this week. Um, now, essentially, if you're unfamiliar, these are like the precursor to form fours. So this is kind of like, hey, this is going to happen, whereas the form fours are like, hey, this has happened. What I saw on this though, that was my main takeaway, is I noticed this number right here. It's 165 million shares as of January 6th. Now, the reason that this stood out to me is because I remember from the recent $250 million ATM 
is that that same exact number was listed. So if you guys want to either bring this up yourself or just hold on to the video here, you can see that it gives you a very clear outline of all the dilution that might happen to Redwire. Now to simplify things, of course, I brought this into the evaluation model. And what we're looking at here is essentially broke that paragraph into numbers and you'll see the $165 million here, the extra 21 million here, so on and so forth. And when you put that all together, it looks pretty ugly, you know, going from 155 million shares as of Q3 end to 212 million as of Q4 end, right? But seeing that same 165 million as of the end of, or sorry, let me, let me double check the numbers. So there's 165 million as of November 4th for the ATM. And then that same exact number, 165, 150, 783, that same exact number is right here. So what this tells me is that the ATM has not yet happened. Now, of course it's going to, like I wanna be clear, I'm not saying, oh, the dilution is not gonna happen. I'm just saying it's not going to happen in this quarter. So consider that as we go forward in the example that I'm about to lay out. So if we were to just kind of hang on to this 212 million and scroll all the way down, look at the price to sales, you'll see that Redwire as of close today has a market cap of 2.1 billion and is trading with the price to sales, depending how you look at it, if you're looking at trailing 12 month, current or forward 12 month, we're looking at a spread between 4.6 to 6.4. But if we are going to back that number out because there wasn't the dilution, this is how the Q4 earnings are going to print. It's going to be that 165 million shares. And that is going to essentially, oh, and one more thing, sorry, the um, revenue for the quarter you know, if we're going to expect a full year, 330 million, that leaves Q4 at 103.4 million. So if we annualize that and we reference the current market cap, which is, or I guess that'd be the Q4 end market cap, which is based on the shares that we just adjusted, the market cap is 1.6 billion and the revenue would be, you know, 103 times four. So if I'm over explaining it or complicating it, my apologies, essentially what we need to really look at here is you can either look at the trailing 12 month price to sales, which is five, the current price to sales, which is the Q4 revenue multiplied by four, referencing the market cap as of Q4. And, or we have the forward 12 month, which is now 3.6. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to look at a, well, well, what is a fair value, right? If we look at the other companies within the industry, you know, we have Aerovironment trading with a price of sales of nine, Black Sky with price of sales of eight, Voyager 11, Planet Labs 23, Firefly 35, Rocket Lab 80, and ASTS is 1.2 thousand. Um, okay. <clears throat> so maybe we won't use ASTS as the example. We're going to use literally everyone else. So um, down here, this is where the price targets are arrived at. And if you guys are interested in these valuation models, they're all available on Patreon. Link is in the description below. But you'll notice that this right most column, it's labeled as variable. So all of this stuff can be adjusted and you'll see that everything throughout changes, right? So what I mean by that, I'm gonna use this as the example. Right now, essentially what this is doing is saying, what is fair value for Redwire if you were to assume right over here, a price to sales of eight. Now, of course, that seems a little bit high, you know, 2.0 to 2.5 is the historic average, but oh, for Russell 3000. Now, if you're looking at the other ones, 1.5 to 3.5, 0 0.5 to 2, 1 to 2, Redwire seems really high at this four, right? But then you start looking at other companies, like even, you know, Rocket Labs, the easy example to cherry pick with a price of sales of 80. But if you were to even do something fair like Black Sky um, with a price of sales of eight, well, Redwire is still in like going to double from here. If you want to start getting real crazy, you know, like what is it at if it's like a 15? Well, that would make a price target of $37. And I know I, I say it <laughs> probably too much, honestly, but there's more than just the price to sales, right? Like you need to consider the margins, right? Because you could have a company that has really high revenue, but if you're going to have, you know, really poor quarters, like Redwire has had some bad quarters, you know, 6%. Um, gross margin, the negative 31% we're going to dismiss this one time because that was like the whole, all the all the fees and whatnot from the edge autonomy acquisition. But going forward, 
now that everything is settling, it's looking like Redwire is going to be trading with a gross margin, or sorry, not trading, realizing a gross margin of, you know, between 27 and 30% is what was quoted on the Q3 call. But to be conservative, we're just going to assume 25%. Now, if you really wanted to dig into this, um, I'd suggest looking at this edge. Uh, it's like a edge annual tab, if you will. So essentially what we've done is we've taken all the annual data from Redwire and the annual data from Edge Autonomy. We've kind of baked it together with some forward assumptions. Now, you'll see that like if you were just to look at at the two companies as though they've been together this whole time, the gross margins would be you know 26%, 32%, 28%, and then 42% for 2025. So to think that now that all that stuff is actually out of the way, it seems like to call a gross margin of 25% going forward fair almost seems like a low ball. So, you know, when they say 27 to 30%, I kind of believe them, but I'm also being a little bit conservative because, well, I like to be. All this to say is like, there's more to it than looking at just the price to sales, right? But in the case of Redwire, like we can't use the next formula down because it's, it's earnings dependent and Redwire is not earnings positive yet. Same thing, you know, the next one down is also um, earnings based and the next one down, taking from several different items, but point stands. The reason that these ones are negative is because, well, you need to be profitable for those formulas to work. So unfortunately, all that we really have is price to sales. And when you're kind of looking at, at other companies within the industry, like the ones that we went over, a lot of those aren't profitable as well. And those are only using the price to sales. To kind of round out the video, what I'll do is I'll, I'll pass it to you guys. What do you think is a fair price to sales or a fair way to value a company like Redwire? Is it fair to give them a price to sales of 15? Like, I mean, that seems like, it seems like Redwire is going to have a crazy run, but at the same time, like, maybe they should. I, I think they were kind of like, you know, left to the wayside way too early. And like a lot of people were like, management needs to go. Well, they did. And like, oh, they're not getting contracts. Well, now they are. I mean, these guys are like, they're literally growing like human tissue in space. They're growing molecules in space. They're going to be the ones to literally build the roads on the moon. I wouldn't count these guys out. I think they're going to have a phenomenal 2026. I think that there's going to be an absolute onslaught of new contracts coming, you know, whether it's for SDA, like we've already seen Rocket Lab partner with Redwire on that. We already know that Rocket Lab partners with Redwire also on their, their solar panels. We know that Red, like, it's just like, kind of name any program, like, as we've seen, like, they're going to be assisting in the building of the, the like, the commercial or the private space stations. Uh, I mean, the list goes on. Golden Dome, of course. Like, it's just, uh, it's going to be, it's going to be a really, really interesting 2026 for the greater, the greater space industry. And, like, literally, even if Redwire doesn't knock it out of the park. All these other companies are going to, and I think Redwire will rise just by proxy. But I could be wrong. I want to hear from you guys. Like I said, like what's the fair way to value Redwire? Where do you see it at the end of the year? Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Check out the Patreon to view the valuation models that we cover on the channel, including Redwire, Shift 4, Rocket Lab, and EOS Energy. Um, I think that's all for today. Thank you guys for the hangout. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. And um, yeah, take care. Peace.